Hi, my name is Romy and I'm a solutions architect at Databricks. We recently launched Lakeflow Connect to provide simple built-in data connectors for popular databases, enterprise applications, and file sources. In this video, I'll show you how to build a ServiceNow knowledge base assistant using Lakeflow Connect for the data ingestion and Agent Bricks for easily building our assistant. We know that connecting to various data sources can be complex, so we created Lakeflow Connect to simplify this. With our built-in connectors, data teams can now build efficient incremental pipelines at scale with a very easy setup and maintenance and full integration with the Databricks platform, including unified orchestration, observability, and governance. With the new ServiceNow connector, you can now ingest all of your ServiceNow data into Databricks easily in a few clicks and build high-value use cases using your ServiceNow data. In this demo, I built an intelligent chatbot to provide instant self-service support on Databricks. It is powered by our official Databricks documentation and our ServiceNow knowledge base data that you can also have find on our knowledge base website, kb.databricks.com. This is one example of what we can build with ServiceNow, but other very high value use cases include predicting service incidents before they impact operations or delivering personalized IT service analytics. This is a high level overview of the architecture used in this demo. First, we'll see how to ingest the ServiceNow data using Lakeflow Connect. Then we'll quickly go through a notebook to chunk this data and create a vector search index. Finally, I'll show you how you can set up agent bricks to quickly build a high quality question and answering agents over your knowledge sources. And we will have them the Databrick Support Knowledge Assistant ready. The first step to build our assistant is to ingest our ServiceNow data. So to do so, I can come in here, click on add or upload data. And what I see here is the list of all the Lakeflow connectors available. I can pick the ServiceNow connector give a name to my ingestion pipeline. I can choose where I want to store the pipeline events log. So I'll select my catalog and my schema. And I can select the connection to the source. So it has already been created by my team, but I will show you what the connection looks like. What you see here is the information required to connect to my ServiceNow instance with the host name and the OAuth settings so that Databricks can connect to ServiceNow. I can come back here, create my pipeline and continue. On this step, we will see a list of all the ServiceNow objects that are available for loading and ingesting into Databricks. So what I can see here are all the ServiceNow objects. The ones I'm interested in are the knowledge base data. So I want the feedback table, I also want the use one and the knowledge. Then I can choose where I want to store the ingested data in Databricks. So by default, it picked the same location as the event log. So I will leave it as is into my ServiceNow schema. This is where I want the data to be. In this last step, I can choose the settings for the pipeline. So I can select a schedule. I can define the frequency at which I want the ingestion to happen for the incremental changes and add notifications to be notified by email whenever there is a failure with the pipeline. And that's it. So on this page, we're now initializing the pipeline. It will create four resources to run it and then set up all my tables and ingest the service now data. So the pipeline is now running. What you can see are the three different tables for the knowledge base data, the feedback, knowledge, and use objects. And you can see the type of table that will be created, the duration of the ingestion, and the number of rows that were written. So you can see here that we've upsorted 113 rows for the knowledge base table. I can come into my catalog and quickly show you what the data looks like. So in service now, you can have a view at the sample data. So what you can see here is the KB knowledge table. 
you can see the article number in this column and the contents of the article in the text section. Now that I have ingested my knowledge base data, I can also quickly build the dashboard to visualize some of the metrics regarding my knowledge base data. So I can see the number of article by topic, how many were published over time. I can also track the view count and the feedback that were provided by my team. Now that we have ingested our knowledge base data, we need to clean it and prepare it for our assistance. So what I did with this notebook is create a vector search index that I can provide to the assistant. A vector search allows us to find semantically similar content rather than just exact keyword matches. And this is particularly useful for a chatbot assistant because users will not always frame the question exactly the same way and the article is written and a semantic search will be much more efficient. So we have three main steps for this process. The first one is to split the knowledge base articles into smaller chunks of text. Then we can compute the embeddings, which are a numerical representation of the, of the article content. And finally, we can create the vector search index. What I will do rather than go through the code is show you the different steps of the process in my Unity catalog. So I can show you the chunked value table, in some simple data, I have the article number. When the article is long, it's split into multiple chunks so that then the agent can retrieve efficiently which chunk has the right information for my user's question. And then I generated the um, vector search index via codes, but I can also create it via the UI and select which is the primary key to use, the columns to sync, the embedding model that I want to use for embedding my text into a numerical value, and then how I want to sync this vector search endpoint. So now that my vector search index is ready, I can go and proceed to build my agent. To do so, I will use Agent Bricks, which is our new offering to automatically build and optimize an agent. So I'll pick the right brick that I want, so knowledge assistance in my case. So to gain some time, I've prepared the config. What I do is just give a description of what I want the agent to be able to do and configure the different knowledge sources to use. So I have first the ServiceNow knowledge base data provided in the vector search index. I just said, where is the column containing the article reference and the contents? Describing the contents quickly. And I did exactly the same for the DataBricks documentation that I extracted and chunked and embedded into a vector search index. What you can do as well if you have other knowledge sources is that you can provide directly PDF files in a UC volume. Um, that is also something possible. And then I, Agent Bricks will automatically create an evaluation benchmark, optimize it, and find the right balance between cost and quality so that I don't have to spend too much time developing my own agent with added complexity. It can take some time to deploy the agent and optimize it. So what I've done is deploy it already so that I can show you directly how we can use it now. So I can ask it a question, for example, what is Unity Catalog? You can see the response with footnotes with links directly to the documentation that was used to provide the answer. But what if I ask something a bit more specific, for example, how can I list all the available tables and their source formats in Unity Catalog? With this one, what we can see is that it provided a query, but also in the footnotes, it linked this time a knowledge base article rather than the websites with the official documentation. And if I want to go check this article, uh, I can improve my agent by providing a link, but I actually pulled it out here and you can see this is from the knowledge base data that we had made available. So we have seen how we can very easily create a knowledge assistance on our enterprise data. And you have also seen how you can ingest ServiceNow data using our new connector to bring your knowledge base articles. 
You can now ingest very easily your ServiceNow data, but also much more using Lakeflow Connect and build knowledge assistance, chatbots, or other high value use cases. So get started today with Lakeflow Connect and go to datarix.com slash data dash ingestion.